Hi folks, Doc here. I'm in the shop this afternoon. Well, it's turning into evening rather rapidly uh, with Fugazi here. I undertook a project that looked promising and the idea was to build it up, figure it out, get done what I had to get done and then just basically break it down again, shoot a video and say, hey look, success. I want you guys to know that not everything that we do is always successful on the get-go. Um, I'm going to give you a little two-minute speech here uh, on failure. Everyone fails. Don't let YouTube or TV or anybody fool you into a false sense of when so-and-so does something, it always works out right. So when I, as you know, Joe Dude in a garage, try something and it doesn't work out and I fail and I suck and obviously I can't do what these guys on YouTube do or what these guys on TV do, this is not the case. The best of the best of the best fail. Today I failed and I was just going to leave it alone, lick my wounds, regroup and do it again and I thought, no, you know what? You as the viewer deserves to see how failure occurs even to the best of us. So I'm going to step you through what I did to Fugazi here and what went wrong. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, so under the general heading of keeping it real, here's the situation. Uh, as most of you know, when you get into modifying lawn tractors for any kind of use other than intended, which is pretty much cutting grass, uh, certain upgrades have to happen, and, and we all do it. I mean, you, you've done it too. You've got, you know, more aggressive tires and lock transaxles and this, that, and everything else, winches, lights, blah. When a machine goes faster than stock, and I can't stress this enough, one of the things that you have to consider is brakes. Now, factory lawn tractor transaxle brakes are kind of negligible at best, depending on what you have. Um, the brakes on a Honda 3813, for example, are typically rather good for what they are. Um, the brakes on the Sears Roper 633 tend to be really good. The brakes on a Peerless 2300 tend to be really good. Your standard aluminum clamshell cases, uh, like the MSTs and the 800 series and 900 series and all that, they suck. They really do suck. At 5 miles an hour, they're okay. After that, you get into trouble. So at speed on Fugazi here, it would take a bit to slow down. It certainly wouldn't lock them up the way I wanted it to. And when you're nosing down a big gnarly hill on a trail somewhere, you really do need those binders. So, the plan for today was hydraulic brakes. And, uh... I'll show you what I set up and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so starting on the top side here, I've got this master cylinder and I ordered it from one of those Chinese sites. I believe it was wish.com. I belong to a few of them, you know, Banggood and them are all the same. And it's, uh, it's meant to be a drift brake for a car. There's supposed to be a foam thing here. It's a handle. You take the parking brake out of your car, you bolt this into place, you plumb it into the hydraulic system and that allows you to lock up the rear brakes really, really easily for drifting. And I saw this unit on there, I ordered the reservoir separately, and it looked like a really, really cool thing to give Fugazi brakes. Indeed, it wasn't a bad idea. That handle is only temporary. The idea was to unbolt it and build a pedal. As you can see, I've got it parked next to my gas pedal there. You know, gas on the right, brake on the left, both on the right foot, and then the clutch on the left foot, and all is well and fine and good, right? Well, mostly, got the system together, got it plumbed in, no bueno. All right, so here's the business end, as it were, of what I've got going on in the back here. Bring the camera around, and I'll show you that I built that bulky bracket to mount the caliper. And the caliper was from a 90-ish uh Polaris Trail Boss 250 quad. Um anyways, decent enough caliper. You know, it certainly looked like it would fit the bill. And uh, you know, like I said, I made up that beefy bracket to suit. And uh I got a rotor on there, it's a six inch rotor that I mounted directly to the axle. Got the caliper lined up, built the bracket up with the slider pin so that the caliper could float properly which it does all is well there 
and you can see the hydraulic line just kind of goes up tucks under the bodywork and up to the master cylinder all is well there and it worked out really well um, quite frankly it took me quite a long time to get that bracket together I'll give you a close-up in a couple of minutes um, the bracket was quite an undertaking I've already undone the bolts here so I'll just take a moment to pop the bracket out let you get a better look at it bolted directly to the transaxle straight down and through the flanges and uh, the caliper just slides on these pins here floats rather nicely so here's the bracket I cut this out of a ridiculous piece of six inch by four inch by five sixteenths angle iron like it was huge and I spent quite a while shaping it I had to make a little notch for the bleeder screw so that when the caliper slid all the way in on the pins it wouldn't hit and uh, you know I went to a lot of trouble to get this right and it was right that's what makes this so disappointing <laughs> alright so here is a slightly better look at the caliper that came off that Polaris and uh, you know everything seemed good there's lots of meat on the pads etc and uh, you know it sat on the rotor nicely which now I can't do because I'm on a weird angle and the camera's in the way and yada 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 but anyways that was all good so what happened well I got the system together I got the master cylinder bolted down I got the caliper in you know I refitted the bracket for the 48th time sliding on the pins all is well fed the line through hooked it back up bled the brakes and the first thing I noticed it bled well I mean no problem there was pushing a lot of fluid the first thing I noticed when I got it all back together again that the pedal or the handle it was gonna be a pedal it is currently handled was hard as hell rock hard I mean the thing would move maybe a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch if I was freaking lucky the plunger wasn't going in very far as soon as you crack the bleeder screw no problem it'll bury so hard as a rock and I got to thinking about what might be causing that and uh, you know I blew out the hose I know fluid was passing beautifully just rock frickin hard so I put the system together and put the machine up on the stand so like back up on the hoist again started it up threw it in gear and started leaning on the handle and like nothing's happening this thing's just putting away in idle putt 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 wheels turning and I'm just leaning on the handle and it's not it doesn't even seem to be putting a load on the engine I thought, oh what the hell so kind of took it apart again looked at it and it just wasn't dawning on me you know this is this is that one thing where you can know everything and sometimes it just doesn't come to you so you know I put the other wheel back on dropped it off the hoist took it outside just for an actual functionality test never mind putting around in gear on the hoist block and I could put my foot I could practically rip the steering wheel out of its roots standing on that handle with my foot nope not even trying to slow it down what the frick and then finally the light went on here's what went wrong the piston size in this master cylinder is about three quarters of an inch turn this into the light for you see that piston there you see it now that's about five eighths of an inch three quarters of an inch five-eighths of an inch you see the issue yet all right so quickie little hydraulics fluid dynamics lesson for you and exactly what went wrong here is a graphic representation basically of how a hydraulic brake system would work or should work so you've got a small piston and a small cylinder pushing fluid into a larger cylinder and actuating a larger piston so the way that works let's just pretend for a second here that this is a one inch piston and this is a three inch piston so if your foot is pushing this down as a brake pedal and this is actuating a caliper you've got a three to one reduction ratio essentially it's it's kind of like a belt system right if this is your engine and that's your transaxle you're going to run slow but with a ton of torque if this is your engine and that's your transaxle you're going to run fast but with very little torque the same thing is happening here 
So as you're pushing down on this pedal and this one inch piston is pushing into the cylinder, you're pressurizing that fluid to X. X is an unknown right now. We're going to call it X for the sake of this equation. So X amount of pressure is being forced through the tubing to the caliper. Now, when that volume of fluid, and we'll get to volume in a second, when that volume of fluid is spread out over that three inch piston, the pressure is multiplied by a factor of three because this three inch piston is three times the size of the one inch piston. So pressure, which is X, becomes three times that, or three X. So you've tripled the effective amount of pressure at the other end. Volume, uh, the exact opposite is here, is happening here. The volume is reduced by the same amount. Uh, truthfully, you know, you've got this amount of liquid being pushed through and that's all fine and good. Uh, what it essentially comes down to is the stroke is decreased. But if your volume is Y, you get one third Y here. What actually happened over here is I've got a three quarter inch piston here, a five eighths piston here. So if X is the amount of pressure, I'm only getting 0.83x because this piston is actually slightly smaller than this one and 5 eighths is you know 0.83 of three quarters it's it's really this simple so while the volume was impressive I was getting 1.2 times the flow at the other end and it didn't even occur to me when I was bleeding the system bam it's pushing a ton of fluid uh, the pressure is greatly reduced so basically I might as well have just tried to clamp this stupid thing with my foot directly for the amount of hydraulic pressure I was developing at the other end. Uh, part of that basically boils down to me just not paying due attention. I've got the caliper in one hand, I've got the master cylinder in the other hand. I mean the pads were installed and everything so I didn't even inspect it. I went, yeah this is cool. You know, I, I originally just bench bled, just bench bled the, uh, the master cylinder, hooked it up, you know, bled the caliper, went pump, 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 and the piston started moving, the pads started to come together, and I went, fantastic. Took it all apart and just started building. And it just did not occur to me to check the piston size. <sighs> yeah, whoops. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that for the moment, Fugazi still does not have hydraulic brakes. It's, uh... Just one of those things where when you don't touch something for long enough, you start forgetting things. And, uh, you know, like I said, nobody's impervious. When you're watching shows like Roadkill and something goes wrong because, you know, Freiburger forgot something basic like tightening a bolt. It happens, man. These guys aren't making this stuff up. When you goof, you goof. And I thought you guys would appreciate seeing, well, somebody goof. And I goof all the time. And this time I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you guys what happens when you get carried away and you just do something. So I did something. I've got this really pretty master cylinder. And I've got this caliper bracket that just came out awesome. And it might make a good bookend. I don't know, maybe I can keep some of the service manuals on my shelf from falling over. What this ultimately means is I'm going to have to make a choice. I can either choose to try and keep that fancy pants master cylinder and select another caliper that has a significantly larger piston size, uh, or I can try and stick with that caliper and downgrade to a much smaller master cylinder, uh, like maybe off a motorcycle or something like that. Um, I keep looking at the piston size and wondering if it's going to have enough clamping force even with a small master cylinder simply because of the fact that that caliper came off a geared brake. It was a trans brake off the ATV that it came off of. Kind of like the trans brakes on our mowers here. Uh, the brake systems that we typically use actually have a mechanical advantage over the transaxle because they're not going at the same speed of the axle. The brake shaft is geared down. The same thing is true for the ATV that that caliper came off of, so I'm not really sure I'm going to bet the farm on that caliper. Uh, I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet, find a much larger caliper, and hope like hell I've still got sufficient clearance to mount it. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this little expose on when Doc goofs. Uh, I hope you've learned something. I certainly have, and that is don't take anything for granted. You know, you're holding a good master cylinder in your hand, you're holding a good brake caliper in your hand, and you think, you know what, all i got to do is plumb it together and bracket the damn thing. Right? Wrong! Yeah, do you even math, bro? Anyways.
Thank you for watching, sharing, and subscribing. Until next time, take care of yourself.